So today we'll be going over autonomous differential equations. So what exactly are they? Well, just like the many different types of classifications, we have the linear, nonlinear, ordinary, and partial differential equation. We also, we also have what's called an autonomous differential equation. An autonomous differential equation is where the independent variable does not show up in the differential equation. So let's go ahead and use an example. So for this example, it states, consider the autonomous first order differential equation, dy dx is equal to y take away y cubed, and the initial condition, y0 is equal to y0. By hand, sketch the graph of a typical solution when y0 has the given values. You see your different scenarios, a, b, c, d. So now this is an autonomous differential equation because the independent variable, in this case x, is not found in the function here it's only with respect to the in, the dependent variable y so this is an autonomous differential equation so essentially your function with respect to y is equal to this dy dx is differential equation that was given which is equal to y take away y cubed now the first step is to find its um what we call the critical points it's also known as the equilibrium solutions and stationary points which is basically the zeros of this function so just factoring this, the y out, y times 1 take away y squared. Now you could do some more factoring here, which is y times 1 take away y times 1 plus y is equal to 0 to find your zeros. And now we see your zeros of this function is when y is equal to 0, when y is equal to 1, and when y is equal to negative 1. So again, these are your what's called the critical points. So now let's go ahead and graph this solution. So now I just rewrote this function here, dy dx, as well as the different regions which we will which will we will be drawing the typical solution, and we have the critical points here. So let's go ahead and draw the graph. So now we have the graph here with your critical points, zero being the x-axis, your positive one as well as your negative one, and we're supposed to determine within each region what is the general trend of this function. In this case, the rate of change of y. So let's go start off with the first region. Let's call it region 1. Let's call this one region 2. And let's call this one region 3. So for the first region, let's go ahead and just plug in a, a random number, anything that's greater than 1, let's say a 2. So plugging in a 2 for this function here, your rate of change of y is going to be a negative number, right? You have 2 minus uh, 2 to the power 3, so it's going to be negative. So the general trend is a negative slope here, so it's going to be going downward here. Now, for the second region, let's plug in, let's say, between 0 and 1, you could plug in 0. 0.5. And for 0. 0.5, you plug in 0. 0.5, take away 0. 0.5 cubed, which is going to be a smaller number. You see this is going to be, your rate of change is going to be positive. So in this case, it will be sloping upward here. Now for region 3, keep in mind, I made a mistake earlier. This is region 3, and then there's region 4. There's four regions and not three, like I previously wrote. So for region 3, is between 0 and negative 1. Let's go ahead and just assume plugging in like negative 0.5 into the function. And, and we see it's going to be a negative number here. So negative slope. So it's going to be general trend going downwards here. And for anything less than negative 1, you plug in, let's say, negative 2. And this one, the slope would actually be going up here. So these are your typical solutions here for all four regions for this differential equation, your autonomous first order differential equation. So for this next example, we have dy dx is equal to y squared y squared take away 3, 3y. This is known as, a, of course, an autonomous differential equation because the independent variable does not exist within the function itself, which is x here. You just see um, y. And so for this next problem statement is find the critical points and classify each critical point as asymptotically stable, unstable, or semi-stable. So let's go ahead and first off find the critical points of this function. 
So our function <clears throat> with respect to y is equal to this differential equation. And first, you just factor out the y, y times in parentheses, y take away 3. And to find the zeros, of course, is equal to 0. So you see that y is equal to 0 and 3 are your critical points for this particular function. Now, let's go ahead and graph this. So we see for the first region, the first critical point 3, your second critical point is 0. So let's go ahead and choose a value of 4 and plug it into your equation. You see when you plug in 4, you get a positive value, meaning your slope is upward. That means your typical solution here is going up. And let's say region between 0 and 3. In this case, let's plug in, let's say, 2. It's going to be a negative number. That means it's sloping downward, going here. And for anything under um, the value 0, let's say negative 1, this was going to be negative. Negative is going to be positive. That means it'll be sloping upward here. Now, for each critical point, we're supposed to determine um, if it's stable, unstable, or semi-stable. Now, in this case, you see, so for the first critical point, we see that this, um, on the top region, the function is, slow, is sloping upward, okay, and for the bottom region, it's sloping downward, so at this point, it will be considered unstable. And now for your critical point zero, we see that for both regions, the function actually basically, you could say, converges to zero, so this would be known as stable. So just to reiterate, now this first critical point is considered to be unstable because the function is sloping away from this point and the bottom region as well. They're both sloping away from each other, which is why it's unstable. Now for the other critical point, both of the functions are actually sloping towards each other, which makes it stable. Now, another way to consider whether it's stable or unstable um, without having like a visual representation of it would be this. So here drawn is your critical point, and if your top region, if your function is less than zero, and your bottom region and your function is greater than zero for the bottom region, this would be considered as stable. So for unstable, you have your critical point. For the top region, your function is positive going upwards, and for the bottom region, your function is negative going downwards. This would be unstable. And finally, you have your semi-stable. So for the top region, your function is negative, and for the bottom region, it's also negative. Now here's a um, visual representation, uh, just an example here. For the first region, on top of the critical points, sloping downwards, and it's also sloping downwards for the bottom region, so this would be considered as semi-stable. So let's go ahead and do another example. For this first order autonomous differential equation, we have dy dx is equal to y times the natural log of y plus 2. Now, um, based off the natural log, we see that we already have a domain that y must be greater than negative 2 in this case because the natural log would be undefined if it were a natural log of 0. So now let's go ahead and find the critical points of this function. So we have y natural log y plus 2 is equal to 0. So your critical points is equal to y equal to 0 as well as negative 1 because natural log of 1 is equal to 0 as well. So these are your critical points. Now let's go ahead and draw the graph. So of course this function is undefined when y is equal to negative 2. So it has to be greater than this value. And we have our critical point 0 and negative 1. So for the, let's call this region 1 region 2 and region 3. So for our region 1, any value of y greater than 0. So in this case, let's go ahead and plug in y for this equation. We see it's going to be a positive value, so it's going to be going upward here. Now for region 2, it's going to be negative value. So let's say um, it's going to be negative 0.5. Plug it into the function. You see it's going to be negative, so, so it's going to be sloping downwards here. So now for the three region, third region here, we have it between negative 1, negative 2. Let's say plugging in negative 1.5 to this function. We have a negative here, but also the natural log function will be negative. So therefore, it's, uh, the function will be positive going upward here in this case. So we see for this region here, since the function in region 1 and the function in region 2, they're basically going away from each other. This would be considered unstable. And for region 2 and region 3, the functions are actually basically converging to the critical point, so this would be considered a stable.
So we see for this problem statement, we have for critical point at negative one, we have stable, critical point at zero is unstable. And of course, these are our critical points for this particular function. So these are the problems for the autonomous differential equations.